Hey, welcome back to Flywheel Films and welcome to beautiful Palisade, aka wine country in Colorado. This is Brandon Fitch, that's Hank, that's my car, and this is Flying Miata World Headquarters, I guess? World Headquarters, say. the one and only. Yeah, so we are here, we're gonna see what's inside, all the secrets, well, you know, what we can see and what we can't see, and uh, talk about what is actually inside this building, because a lot of people don't even know what happens under the radar Flying Miata. So Brandon, thanks for the uh, the introduction here and uh, talking us through what Flying Miata is because I'm one of the people that didn't really know until I came out here for summer camp. Sure. And that put a lot of like, AKA faces to names, but also a building to the name. Yeah. Um, can you tell me like basically what Flying Miata is, how it started? Uh, so Flying Miata is uh, in the middle of nowhere where we have loud diesel trucks. Uh, but also, so Flying Miata is Miata performance. Um, anything that makes your Miata better, faster, stronger, more reliable, that's what we do. Um, and we've been doing it for as long as there have been Miatas. Uh, Flying Miata actually started 37 years ago in New Jersey. Um, for the mathematically astute among you, you may notice that the Miata hasn't actually been around that long. It started as the dealer alternative, Porsche Audi VW repair shop. Um, the owner uh, got a Miata at the very beginning. Um, there was a absolutely terrifying turbo kit uh, that was <laughs> on the market that he was the only one that could make it run. So everybody started coming to him and it kind of grew from there. So in 96, he moved out here. Um, we went through a couple buildings and we ended up in this 25,000 square foot place. Um, they, so the owner, Bill Cardell and his wife, Terry, uh, ultimately did retire and they actually sold the company to the employees. So now we are technically an employee owned cooperative. So there are eight of us out of the employees here who own Flying Miata. Uh, and anybody who has been here for two years um, is approved uh, and buys in and is an employee uh, <laughs> can own Flying Miata and be part of the decision structure. So. It's really, really cool to be able to own part of something that I've, I mean, I've been here for almost 20 years. Um, so very cool to be able to do that. That's amazing. How much does Hank own? <laughs> uh, well, Hank is pretty new. We've, we've had Hank for about three months. Um, now that having been said, I don't think, oh no, he has peed on one thing. Inside. <laughs> he owns a pallet in the, in the uh, shop, in the warehouse, I think, and a lot of bushes outside. Other than that, I don't know that Hank really owns that much uh, here. But he acts like he owns the place. He acts like he owns the place, for sure. Well, first of all, this is a really interesting facade. Do you know what this was before? So, um, yes, I don't have any idea. The facade is very <laughs> weird and kind of neat and kind of just weird. And I don't have any idea what the idea was behind that. That said, so this was, this has been a, a lot of different things. It's been a writing arena. Hank. Hank, leave it. Hank, <laughs> leave it. Apparently he's trying to own that mousetrap. Um, <clears throat> so it has been a riding arena. Uh, it's been a tack shop, like riding, horse riding equipment shop. It's been a chop shop. Um, I wanna be clear that did not happen while it was in our control. <laughs> um, and it was kind of a, a apartment for a couple of people when we bought it, it's kind of weird. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, we, we bought the building or Bill specifically bought the building, uh, and kind of rebuilt the offices, which are kind of inside obviously, but in the front of the building here, um, actually literally behind the facade plus the shipping office over there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the history of the building. Nice. Well, thanks for that. Let's go inside and see what's behind these doors, what's behind this weird facade. And uh, I'm sure we'll get to the garage in just a bit, but before that, we'll just kind of tour the offices. And you'll probably see a lot of Miata paraphernalia around because if you haven't noticed, that's kind of the business. <laughs> we have been doing it for a while. We've definitely accumulated a few things over the years. Yeah, 1990 was the first NA. 1990 <laughs> was the first NA in that, Yeah. So this is our, um, this is the front office. Uh, we have our glamorous. Oh. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> greeter. You here. have a dog, he has a turbo. I mean, <laughs> we all have our thing, right? We all have our things indeed. <laughs> is this for sale? Yeah, we sell a lot of that actually. 
Um, little known fact, most people don't even need, know that you need it. So it's it's very important. We keep lots of it on hand. Wow. We do. We have ample <laughs> inventory of the micro flu. Um, so Mike is in charge of our customer support department, uh, which is behind us here. We will walk through. Yeah, lots of paraphernalia on the walls, articles about cars uh, we built. Um, oh, this is uh, what your cars that have been? Yeah. Yeah, so these are all the cars that we have owned over the years. Um, so let's see, sold that one. This one is actually now a V8 dirt hill climb monstrosity amazing thing uh, <laughs> that is called Zombie Elvis now. Um, Turbo ND, uh, V8, I feel like everybody knows the Targa car, but this is, this is Keith's car that he built for the Targa Newfoundland uh, V8. This is actually the car that started it all. This is the car that Bill bought in 1989 um, and turbocharged and he still owns personally. Amazing. Uh, this is a car that we built for the Open Track Challenge forever ago. Um, three, 400 horse turbo, uh, four cylinder aero way back in the day, full cage hold nine yards. This is our development car for um, the V8, the ND V8 conversion. Um, so we have sold that one. Uh, this is our NC. Um, it's actually 2006, despite the nose, because we've done a swap. Um, we're working on things for that one. Uh, turbo ND RF. Uh, this one's actually Keith's uh, personal car. Actually, I think it's Keith's wife's personal car, um, but turbo originally 1.6. Uh, this is a Mazda Speed. This is Igor, or Igor, um, salvage car that we kind of rebuilt, turbo car, sweetheart of car, stock, <laughs> stock engine, had our old FM2 turbo kit on it. Um, absolute sweetheart, you know, 200 something horse with the wheels, really easy to drive. Not the quickest thing ever, but definitely not slow and just a very, very friendly, sweet car. Nice, so, it's amazing. Well, we will walk through and we'll try to be quiet because they are on the phone. So this is customer support. <clears throat> so this is where uh, you guys call, email, chat, whatever. Um, we will answer your questions from here. Um, some of our crew works remotely, so that's why there's some empty seats. Um, so Nick over there, uh, he is on the phone, so we're gonna be quiet. Uh, Ethan over here. Ethan has a pretty entertaining collection of Miatas. Um, we'll see one of them out in the shop. Uh, <laughs> and... Is your is your one six outside? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, one six okay. kind of daily car, so entertaining stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice. The one that runs. The one that runs. Yeah, yeah. indeed. We'll go upstairs. Uh, see our collection of wheels. Those are our Kogeki wheels. Beautiful. Uh, that are made specifically for us. Um, and then the two wheels on the end. Those are our Tobu wheels. So those are forged wheels for the Indies. Very light, very strong. Nice. Uh, office space, that's purchasing. Uh, here's our map of customers that was updated approximately 20 years ago. Um, we've gotten busy, so that's a very old thing, but you know, Still. international, national. Yeah. So we have our fleet of 3D printers up here. Um, these are churning out parts. We run them close to 24 seven as we can. Um, so 3D printing has become very popular for lots of very good reasons. Um, these are a little, these are higher end printers. Uh, they're not bonkers, but it does print uh, material called onyx. So it's a carbon fiber infused nylon. Gives a really, really nice surface finish to it. Uh, and it's extremely strong. It has a very high heat deflection point. So it's good to use in the engine bay. Obviously there's a limit to it. It's still plastic, but it is much higher than you would think. Um, and also resistant to oil and gas and all that fun stuff. So very chemically resistant. Now uh, we make our tools out of that. Nice. Yeah. We were able to move from aluminum to this stuff and drop the price quite a bit. Uh, How many is... printers are there? So there are eight printers. Eight. Wow. Yeah. We keep adding them uh, in an effort to keep <laughs> up with demand. Uh, do you know how many different parts you 3D print, roughly? Oh man, that's a good question. Well, let's ask Kyle. <laughs> so Kyle is in product development with me. Um, Kyle, how many 3D parts do we print for production? Like how many individual SKUs do you think we have? I can tell you exactly how many individual SKUs we have. 
So some of them are going to be parts of kits. So the individual SKUs will be slightly larger than the total number of parts that we have. Mm. Our current list sits at 68. 68. So we'll say 50 to 60 individual kits by the time you put stuff together. Nice. That might still be a little optimistic because there are parts within parts. But anyway, it's a lot. we'll round down and say 40 to 50. It's kind of a wild new future with 3D printing. It's very, very cool. It, it allows us to iterate very quickly when we're uh, designing parts. Um, it allows us to make, you know, if we find a better way to do something, we can make that change immediately. Uh, and it allows us to have more control over the process of production. Nice. So uh, we can look out on the shop a little bit, give you a view from up on high. So we'll go through the different areas, uh, but basically uh, warehouse, <clears throat> assembly, more warehouse, and then the development is around the corner there. Nice, yeah, we'll see all that in just a bit. Yep, uh, this is our conference room, uh, meeting room, whatever it's around. The flex space. Yeah. So we are coming out on top. We try to be energy efficient, uh, and it, shipping has gone home for the day, so these lights will come on as we walk around. So this is inventory. Um, this is where all of your shiny new Miata parts sit eagerly awaiting for you to uh, click the button on our website. Uh, this is shipping, boxes, tape, computers. That's the shipping office in there. Um, and then, yeah, we'll walk down this random <laughs> aisle. Uh, we've got lift kits, we've got LEDs, shift knobs, what else? Exhaust gaskets, that's exciting. Antenna deletes, this is what I was just telling you about. Oh yeah, 3D printed? Yep, 3D printed. Um, don't buy that if you want FM reception, but if you want a very clean look and low profile for your antenna, that that's is an it. excellent option. Do you know how many different parts you guys sell? Whoa. Just a ton. <laughs> you know, being in product development, I should probably know that, but I don't. Um, it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot. So this might be a good place to pause and be like, I don't know if we actually talked about exactly what you do, uh, so I am in charge of product development around here. Um, so basically that means that I design parts, not as much as I would like, but I design parts. Um, I work with manufacturers, so we don't manufacture anything in house, uh, but we work with experts in that particular field. You know, if it's casting, if it's CNC machining, if it's, uh, silicone hoses, you know, batteries, electronics, whatever it is, we work with the experts that know that particular field and they will design it to our design. Um, now, sometimes our design is we give them parameters and then they design to our parameters. Sometimes it is literally, we have drawn it in CAD. This is what we want you to produce kind of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, nothing manufactured in the house except for 3D printing. Except for that, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But this is just like a magical, I don't know, <laughs> toy shop. So yeah, we got brake parts, we got radiators, we got exhaust parts. Let's see, that's a catalytic converter. I think maybe those are strong arms. We've got red line stuff. Um, we've got a whole pile of coolant reroutes. Um, so these are parts that we have machined elsewhere. And then we uh, we assemble the kits here. Um, this is one that I'm kind of proud of. That's uh, beautiful. Yeah, this was this was a thing to design, let me yeah. tell you. Uh, <laughs> so this is for the NAs and the NBs, uh, fits with EGR. Um, it makes for more even cooling across the engine. Um, I won't get into the details, but that's the short version. Uh, and the really neat thing that I like about it is for turbo cars, you got hot water front for, or you get water for the turbo here. And then instead of going back into the engine, um, where it's just making it hotter and hotter, it actually goes here, which goes up to the radiator, which means that it sheds that heat that the turbo puts into the coolant before that coolant goes back into the engine. Solving. <laughs> and you guys so there's a mixture of parts there's some that are flying miata some that are mm -hmm. companies you work with mm -hmm. um are there any that are both where you sell your own part but also other companies versions of the same part uh so there are different ways to answer that question i mm -hmm. suppose um you could look at the willwood kits where it's both some of the kits are willwood kits but we spec higher end components that what than what is normally available on oh, the shelf yeah. um, there are other things where we use a totally normal willwood caliper 
and a totally normal rotor. And then we have designed the bracket for that kit. So it's kind of a combination. And then there's other things that are kind of obvious. Like we sell our crossflow radiator, which is our design that Koyo makes for us. But then we also sell a Koyo generic replacement radiator if you just need a radiator and nothing high performance. Yeah, it's so. cool to have different levels, different striations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, this is wild. <laughs> One of the things that we really try to do is curate the catalog. So instead of throwing a million things at the wall and seeing what sticks, we test and we examine every individual part to see what is the best for us. You know, for example, for the for the earlier Miatas, <clears throat> Excuse me. Instead of selling a million different suspension kits, because there are about a million different suspension kits out there, we sell the you know we sell a few different shocks um, for different specific uses. We sell um, our stage one suspension kits. That's you know Coney Sports and FM Springs uh, for kind of street and occasional track. We sell the V Maxes for uh, street and track, but a little more aggressive at a price point. And then we sell the Fox if you just want the best. So again, we don't sell everything that we can get from a from a you know big distributor we just sell the things that we know we can support we believe in we know are the proper products so. yeah makes sense because you'd have to have a warehouse three times the size if you wanted to sell well anything it, but some it, could be direct ship i guess <laughs> yeah some could be direct ship i mean if we wanted to do that we could but we don't yeah uh, we only want to sell stuff that we believe in we don't want to sell a thing because it'll sell we want to sell a thing because it is the best thing for your purpose and if you don't need this shiny, you know, you, you call us up asking for a big brake kit for your street car. We're going to tell you it'll work totally fine. You can absolutely use it. There are no drawbacks to it and you don't really need it. Your stock brakes <laughs> will probably do that job just fine. So we're going to try to help you through whatever that decision process is for you. And we're going to Again, we're not going to sell absolutely everything. We're only going to sell the things that we know, we believe in, we know are good, and we can fully support. High quality, because you have customer service just to answer for things that may not be, and you don't want to sell things that are, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We don't want to sell questionable. <laughs> Begging for, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. what section is this exactly? So this is, mm, <laughs> I don't know what our technical term for it is, but basically this is our pre-inventory. Hmm. So for a lot of the parts, um, we'll get just individual parts in stock and then we assemble those into a kit you know the for the oil filter relocation kit you know we have this machined for us about 10 miles away maybe um and then this also machined oddly at the same place uh, <laughs> and then there are a handful you know i, I don't know where they're scattered around yeah. by part number but there's, you know, the, the hoses, there's the brackets, there's the fittings, all that kind of stuff. So we buy all that stuff individually and then we assemble it into a kit and then we put it on the shelf and then it waits for you so that when you click that buy button, we can get it out the door immediately for you. And we nice. don't have to do all of this when you hit the go button. Nice, yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is that area we have, you know, hose and heat shield and wire, um, We've got brake rotors, and here's another kind of neat 3D sprinted part. Um, this is a brake duct for the R package on uh, the NA Miata. Wow. Uh, or an RS lip, I think they're called the, the knockoffs. So, and you can see again that, I mean, the print quality on that is super clean. Yeah, very clean. Nice. So, this is actually part of our U Design program. So, with those printers, there are a lot of people out there that have very good ideas that do CAD stuff kind of on a hobby level and some not on a hobby level, but if you have a design, you don't want to mess around with trying to sell it, distribution, anything like that, but you wanted to, you have a design that maybe you want to make a little money off of, maybe you want to get out to the, to the market as a whole. Um, we have our U design program. So basically you send us your design, we make sure that it's up to our standards. We help work with you. If it's something we want to carry, then we'll work with you to bring it up to our standards if need be, and then we sell it. So you get a royalty for each one we sell, um, and we take care of everything. We take care of production, inventory, shipping, all of it, um, and you just get a check. Nice. So it works out really well, and that's another one of the big advantages to the 3D printers is that we have the ability to do that and to do smaller production runs um, it still has to be at least some kind of volume, yeah. but we can do smaller production runs that way. So, um, 
Yeah, more parts. These are all uh, our custom silicone hoses for our turbo kits, which yes, I promise we are trying extremely hard to get back in stock. <laughs> um, but you can see it's all custom formed, make it so it's an easy fit. Um, everything plugs in, extremely durable, easy install, fewer potential failure points. I could go on for a while, but I'm, yeah. I really like these. I've been running this kit on my car since it had our very old kit that was not up to those standards. When was your first Miata purchase? Oh boy. <laughs> well, I might, I might admit to being old um, here. Uh, <laughs> my first Miata purchase would have been somewhere around 2000, I yep. believe. Yeah. Nice. Yep. So well, what, this is just more, um, I guess. Yeah, so pre, this is more inventory. Yeah. Um, we got a bunch of different sway bars for the different generation. Um, if you have not modified your car at all, sway bars, best bang for the buck that we sell, easy install, the ND front is a little more complicated to be fair. <laughs> but generally speaking, easy install, huge bang for the buck, very little to no drawback. So anyway, shameless plug for those. Um, we can see we've got a bunch of radiators. Most of those are our cross flow radiators. Uh, we've got brake kits. So this is kind of the bigger stuff. Some stuff we have to buy in really high volume um, in order to make it happen or to make it financially feasible or whatever. Um, so this is kind of where the stuff, the, the overflow, yeah. so to speak, is. So if anyone remembers uh, my Flying Miata summer camp video last year, I had a couple clips in there of me doing my first autocross ever. Brandon was in the passenger seat giving me some tips and tricks. And uh, that was one of the things he mentioned right away, sway bars, which yeah. I have coilovers, which helped a lot, but there's still more that can be done yeah. <laughs> because the NC is a bit boaty, as they say. <laughs> um, but now it's kind of, I think the part everyone's really curious about is some of the cars. I mean, that's what I was curious when I got here for summer camp. I was like, well, you had all the cars you guys worked on and stuff out front. And yeah. I was like, yeah. the first thing I noticed as I pulled up yep. at first, I was like, is this the right place? <laughs> but then I saw the little flying me out on the corner and then all the cars. Yeah. And I recognize some of these, especially this one right here. Yep. Yep. So we, we, we like to name our cars um, <laughs> that, I mean, we like our cars, but less from an infection standpoint and more from a, there's so many around here. It's just easier to identify them that way. Uh, so this one is Andy uh, 2016. It has our Indy BBR turbo kit on it. Uh, it has, I'm pretty sure Fox. It's got our big brake kit. So four piston calipers front and rear. It's got the nine lives racing big Wang on it. Um, it has our tiny Melee Designs anti-gravity battery case. Um, it is on the charger right now, and that is because we have uh, accidentally drained it testing things. Because these cars, that car, um, we, so again, I'm in the product development end of things. Um, I want to poke and prod at everything. <laughs> uh, I, I have been forbidden to touch that car, at least mostly because that is our show car. That's Bob. Um, <laughs> This one we're poking and prodding with uh, a lot. So, uh, has our Varus catch can. This is an excellent, excellent upgrade for an ND. It's an ND in there. Uh, yep. It's got our pedal kit. Uh, actually, it's got our Cypher steering wheel on it. Uh, it's got our Craven Speed short shift kit. Um, it has our roll bar as well. Nice. Right there. So, it's a sweetheart. It's, it's such a good car. Um, so this one is Marshmallow. Aptly named. Where the name comes from. <laughs> uh, this is Jeremy's '94. Uh, something like that. Half the trunks of sub. Yep, half the trunks of sub. He's a musician. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, definitely has some stereo stuff in there. Um, it is uh, not the most dramatic car that we have. Here. Yeah. It's got our Delrin shift knob, Cipher NV steering wheel. We do have uh, a little sneak peek of a intake that we're working on there that will be available shortly we're very excited to bring that one back uh, much better than before new and improved new and improved as they say um love this color <laughs> yep so this is a wrap this is ethan's car um as far as i know its name is ethan's car uh I like it ethan's nb because he's got a few yeah that was ethan we met earlier this is one of his cars so um it is a <clears throat> previous stance car <laughs> uh, so i couldn't tell <laughs> yeah it's a good way to get uh in cars inexpensive because they, they tend to be a little abused i think if nothing else 
the underside is, is a little <laughs> damaged. But the show car looks good as the always. The show car looks good, yeah. So this one's Bob. Is that named after Bob Hall? No, so this is actually, it's, it's full name is Captain Bob. Oh. Uh, because this car used to belong to Terry's dad, whose name was Bob. Mm. And he was a captain in the Navy, I believe. Submarine captain. Um, and yeah, now it is a show car of ours. He so. only owned this because the NC didn't exist. Uh, probably. The yacht. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at that point, exactly. <laughs> Love uh, it. But yeah, so it, it has our... Uh, what we used to call our little big brake kit on it. That's our stage two brake kit now. Um, we've kind of redone the interior. Yeah, it's super clean. Yeah, super clean. It's got the NB seats. We recovered them uh, with suede in the middle and they've they've got the foamectomy, um, you know, custom gauges, trim rings, all this kind of stuff. The gauge cluster, steering wheel, Love door it. panels. Yeah, yeah, it's a super it's clean, really nice car. I think this is probably not literally but nearly a lexus blue it's a wrap yeah um but it is it is at least based on a or very similar to a lexus blue so. classy classy mazda badges yep yep exactly uh so this one has our stage one turbo kit on it um it has our cross flow radiator that's got our stage three fan kit so these guys are two brushless fans that pull against they pull a mind-boggling amount of air um, and against a high pressure. Um, they also are very intelligent, so they will start up very smoothly um, and softly, and they also only spin as fast as they need to to keep the temperature in check. So translation, they're basically silent unless you really, really need them. So a turbo kit, and it's got our CNC cut gold foil on the air box there uh, to keep the air as cool as possible. It's got our CNC cut uh, heat insulation here, heat and sound uh, to make it a little bit quieter. This is all from DEI. Um, stainless heat shield, their laser engraved logo there. And Love it. All sorts of stuff. Clean, yep. way cleaner than mine. It's, it's a nice car. So this one we call Roller Girl or Reggie uh, <laughs> because we bought it from a previous employee who uh, competed in uh, roller derby. So, wow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a development car. You can tell it's a development car because it's kind of torn apart right now. So this is the one that we are officially allowed to disassemble, do whatever we want to. There are no other obligations for it. Some of them are kind of shared duty, like uh, Andy, the ND. Um, some of them are specific. That is show car only. This is development only. So, which is why it looks a little, little ugly. So um, the interior is an interior. There's nothing yeah. fancy in there. Uh, this one also has our stage one turbo on it. Uh, it has our stage two brushless fan kit. So everything that I said about the other one applies to this one. This is just one 14 inch fan instead of two 12 inch fans. So a little bit easier fitment, a little bit less expensive, still performs extremely well. This is what I have on my personal car. Nice. I'm a huge fan. Um, little preview of uh, another part that we're working on here. Uh, new shock tower race. So that will be available in the future. Nice. Yeah, development car. And then an NC over here with, uh, is that a hat? It is a hat. <laughs> I believe it's a, a captain's hat or perhaps an admiral's hat. Wow. <laughs> Perfect. Mike. Uh, so this is Mike's car who this, we saw earlier. Yep. This is Mike's car. Um, he, he is all in on the NC for sure. Uh, so he's, he's playing around with the suspension on this guy. Uh, we also have another new product on here. So this is the Smart Flash from or smart flasher i guess yeah. uh from our friends at mx5 things so this uh that's basically a replacement flasher module so you take your stock one out you put this one in uh it is led compliant so you don't have to mess around with resistors or anything uh it also has the tap to turn ah uh, i need that and that's programmable. <laughs> yeah, so he's got it for doing like five or six or whatever, but exactly. Yeah, yeah so you can, can just tap the turn signal, get a couple, just like any modern car. Just like any modern car. Um, it also, again, programmable, but it will turn the lights on, uh, parking lights on for 30 seconds when you lock or unlock the car. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, super simple install, um, just plugs right in. There's one wire uh, that you put on 12 volts for programming purposes. Yep. 
So that's easy. Something I need to add to my car. It looks like, yeah. because yeah, the tap turn was a brilliant thing. And I, it's hard to find one now because the guy who made it unfortunately passed away, but, uh, sounds like the torch has been handed off <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one way or another. Yeah, exactly. So, which is awesome. Yeah. We're excited to take care of those guys. Yeah. I think the NC is, I mean, it's, it's been out for a while and it was the longest running generation, I guess, nine years. And, uh, looking forward to seeing hopefully more parts on that and whether it's you guys or other everyone else developing them too it's just a yeah. exciting platform that everyone's branching into it is for sure it's kind of been the redheaded stepchild for for a while but that doesn't make it a bad car yeah and it's also <laughs> i think finally maturing past that point um and it is i mean they're excellent cars they're they're bigger but that doesn't make them big and there are advantages like big tires and bigger engines and more power and stiffer chassis and all that kind of stuff and, and simply more room more comfort inside yeah so and i see there's there's two lifts do you guys use these bays interchangeably or how do you like this is where you obviously develop stuff and test things and exactly work on cars yeah so basically that is our development lift over there um we have an exciting project over there that i'm not going to talk to you about not yet anyway so we it's worry just about a blue and sea we'll ignore that yep yep that's just a, a lonely lonely boring <laughs> car over there don't you worry about what's going on there uh but no that so that is basically our development area over there and then this is kind of an overflow lift okay cool. um so we we used to have a bunch of lifts in here we did customer work it was also always a pretty small part of our business yeah um and what it what it basically boiled down to is that we were spending a lot of time and effort and money servicing a small handful of customers at the expense of our main business which is putting parts in boxes and shipping them all over the world uh so we kind of made the hard decision so kyle used to be a mechanic working on cars now he's working with me in the product development end of things yeah so we can bring out as many new shiny products to you guys as possible so which is really cool yeah so yep. i guess when when people you know try to order parts order a turbo kit and they're like hey can you install it how do you do that conversation do you like have a lot of instructions do you have shops you now recommend around the country or is it really up to them how do you facilitate that um so we're, we're definitely not going to leave them high and dry yeah um not at all uh we do have really thorough instructions for nearly all of our products we certainly try um we're we have more and more videos the turbo kit in in particular has a i don't know i don't know multi-page instruction manual yeah. or a bunch of pages in it, whatever um but there's also a video series that mike did that's i don't know it's like four hours long or something it's very very thorough and it's excellent for helping new people to to go through that also we're available you know five days a week you need us call email chat facebook whatever whatever however you want to get in touch with us uh we're here to help that's so, awesome yeah yeah i appreciate the shop tour um, yeah. and seeing just what this whole place is all about and where all the magic actually happens um for you guys don't know i'm going to do a track day tomorrow you'll be there right um, oh, yep. my first actual track day with this miata so we'll see how it goes that's a separate video and then also another video is my road trip and wild experience getting out here and back home <laughs> through the rockies through the snow with my track tires you know it's just a fun fun time but you hey, picked an entertaining day to come over the mountain <laughs> that was wild but man i got some great photos with the kogeki sitting nice on the nc Perfect. so good we appreciate it's it. all worth it but thanks brandon yeah and, uh yeah absolutely. guys check out uh everything else fly miata does um they have tons of videos which is awesome i like seeing all the content you guys are putting yeah. out a lot of very informational things you learn a lot more there than you will in your four-year college degree <laughs> so uh yeah check them out and uh hopefully we we'll see you at summer camp cool we'll see you guys